next time I'll rip your fucking legs off and shove them up your arse till you've toes for teeth! Gear up to the nick of time, as always! Zoltan, with your boot to someone's ass, as always. Who were those men? Local color. I wasn't they going more than a moment. Long enough for them to turn our home into theirs. All right, time for some spring cleaning. I've got to boot them all out. Care to join me? With pleasure. Bad idea. This place is some kind of a bar that Dandelion owns. He doesn't seem like he'd be the most responsible business owner, and I guess if he were, though, all these people wouldn't be here to try and kill him. So, hmm, I guess his shitty business sense or his attitude or screwing people over or something like that has caused a bunch of people to show up and try to kill him. Now, these people don't seem like they're any kind of protection racket or anything like that. They're just a bunch of vagrants that are, he pissed off and they're here to get some revenge. We also have this other character, Zoltan, here, and I wonder if... I don't really wonder. What I do wonder is why in fantasy genre do all of these dwarves always turn out to be Scottish? Now, I, you know, I'm not sure what the kind of portrayal was prior to the Lord of the Rings movies. But I'm pretty sure Tolkien didn't envision them as being like a Scottish people. But in the movie, there was John Rhys Davies played it Scottish. And you even see in, like, the Dragon Age series, the dwarves are all Scottish. I think it's a little irritating. I'd like to see it done a different way. But, you know, whatever. I'm pleased. That went well. Now we can greet each other like the gods ordained. Ages, pal. Hey, Zoltan. You look good. Training plenty lately. What with the war on, no Mahakaman meat to be found, but Redanian laggers standing in just fine. You, though, you've weathered a bit. Something worrying you. It's about Siri. I know she came to Novigrad. Might still be here. You mean she's come back? I'll be damned. I wonder if I'd recognize her. How many years is it now? Six? Seven? But what'd she be doing here? Hiding, probably. She might be in danger. See her in your dreams? Couple times. Her and the Wild Hunt. Oh, not good. Not at all, but I know she came here and contacted Dandelion. <sighs> We've a wee problem, then. Where's Dandelion? <laughs> I'd like to know that myself. Maybe he could explain what the hell's going on. I just barely returned, as you saw. I'm expecting to come home to a hot leg of boar and some cold ale, and what do you find instead? A shite storm. Dandelion gone, the tavern chock full of bums. Have no clue what happened. Hmm. Let's look around. Might find something that'll put us on his trail. Prime idea. I say we start on the ground floor. It's where he sat and wrote. I guess you're going to need to use some kind of a different accent for these characters, but Scottish is just lazy. Hmm. Ten barrels of Toussaint Dry, five cases of sodden triple mead. Hmm. Nothing here. No, 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 no! That's exactly what we're looking for! It says planner! Huh. Dandelion and planning? Good one. Besides, anything he wrote here probably had a special system. Chaos only he could ever decipher. Actually, in the past, sometimes not even that. Give him a chance. Might not be that bad. Seems when he inherited this fine establishment, it came with some fine responsibilities. Bookkeeping among them. He also made a habit of noting down the times of his meetings. Official and private. So, who'd he been seeing of late? Ah, here it is. Hmm. Seems he's only been meeting women of late. The dog. 
Hmm. Not a bad idea. Dandelion's pretty loose-lipped. Might have blabbed something to a lady friend that'll put us on his trail. That's what I'm counting on. Hmm. We should divide these somehow. Perhaps... Ah, fuck it. I'll ask the lassies at my half you interrogate the ones on yours. So che. Zoltan, wait. This is in verse. And you figure that's unnatural because... Wonderful. Meet me back here when you're done. Share our findings. Right you are. Need to do a wee bit of tidying for a go. Cannot stomach the idea of coming back to this mess. And you'd be wise to read your bit before you scurry off. If you need anything, I'll be next door. I do kind of want to feel like I need to give the benefit of the doubt to the developers of this game or any other kind of fantasy series that's portrayed with voice actors and all that kind of stuff. Because you do need to sort of give the characters, the dwarves or the elves or whatever, a certain kind of distinction to other them out of the normal human characters, to give them some distinct feature which would then be recognizable as them being both different and of their own type. So an accent is oftentimes the easy way to do that, and Scottish just seems to have fallen into being the standard. So, I, I, I don't know, maybe it was the Lord of the Rings movie that standardized that, I'm not sure. Uh, it's not a lot of popular fantasy fiction and stuff that I've seen prior to the Lord of the Rings movies. I'm going to save all this crap so I can sell it later. So, you know, maybe that's the reason why they went with that. Although it's so common now that I'd like to see somebody just do something different. Because, you know, there's only so long you can see the same thing over and over again before you start to want to see it a little bit different. Okay, so we found Dandelion's ledger, or poetry book, or whatever the fuck it was we found. And he's detailed a number of different women that he has had um, relations with. And we have to track them down to see if maybe they have some sort of information on the man that we're looking for. Rosa, Molly, Gildorf, uh, Gildorf is the name, Marabella, so, uh, I'm not going to pronounce that name, whatever. Let's go find the first girl. Speed things up so we can get there quick. <laughs> Check the map. I will get you every last copper, with interest. Give me a week, please. Horson's no banker. He's an honest man. You pay on time, you get protection. You don't pay... Help! What you hollering for, stupid wench? What are you hoping for? A knight in shining armor? Close enough. Keep out of this, Greyhead. Not your concern. Take this coin and leave. That ain't how it works. Vespula's to pay, or be taught a lesson. Already given her a verbal reprimand. Now go, before I teach you a lesson. Come on. Gold's gold. Thank you. Oh, thank you. To think there are men who'll help a stranger out of the kindness of their hearts. Not entirely out of kindness. And you're not entirely a stranger. What are you... Oh, I know you. You're that witcher took Dandelion out whoring. Gerald, right? Not Gerald. Geralt. Oh. Dreadful sorry. What do you think? Where could Dandelion be? Probably out whoring. That horse pheasant. That lion scoundrel. Ouch. What did he do to get your goat? Same thing as ever. Prize bullshitter came back, saying it was till death do we part this time. And no more than a week passed before I spotted him in Harborside, strolling with some trollop on his arm. Twas the last straw. All those questions about the washerwomen at the bathhouse, then this. I beat him black and blue and threw him out on his ear. Dandelion ask you about other washerwomen? 
Not terribly subtle, even for him. Maybe he likes some sudsy. Ah, uh, maybe. But what did he ask about, exactly? Oh, this and that, really. What's it like at the bathhouse? Have I got any friends there? What are their working hours? I don't know. Maybe he's looking to hire one for his tavern. Maybe I got all in a huff for no reason. This woman he was with in the harbour. Who was she? Claimed she was his niece from Covia. Ha! <laughs> Horvia, more likely. Corset so tight her eyes were popping out her head. His too, come to think of it. An artist or a whore. Doesn't much matter as they're one in the same. Thanks for your help. Listen, when I find Dandelion, anything I should tell him? No. I mean, tell him he's a two-faced snake, but it would be nice if he dropped by. Well, Dandelion certainly seems like he gets around. And I think it's kind of <laughs> telling that he was asking this one information for another girl he was probably trying to pursue. And uh, even though she's, he's, she's pissed off at him for clearly cheating on her and leaving her, she still wants him to come back. It's, I don't know, funny. Well, next one. I'm a friend of Dandelion's, looking for Ellie Hal. You've come to the right spot. How might I be of service? Need something shortened? Patch your trousers, darn your socks. You, Ellie Hal? Yes. Now pick your jaw up off the floor. Sorry, I thought... Thought Elihal was one of Dandelion's girlfriends. Ah, oh, so it's that. Wait here. Any better? So you're... Elihal. Did you and Dandelion... I mean... How did you two meet? I met him one night in a tavern. He was blind drunk. What happened? What do you think? We spoke. That's it. I'm not sure what you're getting at. But I should make one thing clear. Men don't interest me. Told him that as well. Luckily, Dandelion's an open-minded fellow. We had a lovely evening. He became a loyal customer afterwards. Dandelion visit your shop often? I tried many times to talk him into a decent doublet. Sadly, he'd only come in to get a button reaffixed or a hole patched. When did you last see him? Some time ago. He brought in one of Zoltan's jerkins, insisted I sew on an extra pocket. Odd, as requests go, I had the distinct feeling he'd actually come to talk. What did you and Dandelion talk about? He asked about anything in particular? Hmm, let me think. Had an ordinary chat, really. Although... Indeed, he did keep asking about Kalkstein. If Dandelion and I hadn't laid our cards on the table at the start, I might have suspected he had a history with the alchemist. He spoke like a lovesick beau. In fact, he desperately wished to meet with him. Kalkstein's in Novigrad? Wouldn't mind seeing him myself. You're too late, I fear. The witch hunters nabbed him recently, burned him at the stake in Hierarch Square. But as he perished, ooh, the goings on, impressive. Fiery beasts circled his pyre, then rose into the sky and exploded to form letters. Really? What did they spell? Radovid sucks flaccid cock. I know this is none of my business, but why do you... Why do I dress up? As a child, I dreamt of becoming a Doppler when I grew up. I became a tailor instead. Discovered clothing. Costumes can express all the complexities of one's personality. I'm a Redanian Countess one day, a Dockside Thug the next. That is true freedom. Mm -hmm. Have you never thought to become someone else? Even for a moment. Must be horribly boring being a witcher all the time. I managed to stay interested. 
Thanks for your help, and uh, nice to meet you. I can help with much more. If you need new trousers or a vest, you know where to find me. I guess Dandelion's uh, door swings a few different ways. I'm assuming that he knew that this guy was a man. A man in drag, not even like a transsexual, just somebody who likes to dress up as different people for the sake of existing as a different kind of person. And I don't know, at least by this elf's uh, telling of the story, he was into it, but he had, but he had to turn Dandelion down. I guess that also says something else about Dandelion's sexual proclivity, because not only was that person a man, that person was also an elf. And although you do run into half-breeds of humans and elves, clearly the result of a sexual relationship or whatever between human and elf, it seems to be a certain taboo, especially especially coming from the elven side, which see humans as being like a lesser species. I think it has something to do with the elves thinking that they are the result of some kind of creation, creation myth or something. And humans are the result of evolution, which makes them dirtier, lesser somehow. A product of product of natural chance as opposed to being a handcrafted creation of God, that sort of thing. But in general, there isn't a lot of relations between humans and elves in a sexual way. So, the fact that Dandelion seemed to be both cool with the fact that that, that dude was a guy and that dude was an elf says something about him, I guess. Well, on to the next girl. Excuse me. I'm looking for Marabella. I am she. Wait outside. Class is in session. I'll wait. It won't take long. It turns out he'll not come after all. What? Really? You're gonna make me wait out here? Come on. <laughs> Alright, I'll do it. Dad doesn't like elves very much. Are you an elf? Now can we talk? Yes. What do you want? I know you saw Dandelion recently. Oh yes. Longest afternoon of my life. He read you his poems? No. We peruse the illustrated guide to fungi. Hmm. Maybe... No. Won't even try to guess why he wanted to do that. Mold. That was his interest. When his hand abandoned my knee to point at a figure of penicillium, I knew the fire between us had died. Permanently. See Dandelion after the fungus incident? No. I even considered granting him another chance. His heart of hearts is pure gold. He simply needs a bit more discipline in his life. But he never came back to see me. So I thought if it's done, it's done. Thanks for your help. Farewell. Okay, that was a weird one. He seems to have gone to her just for the sake of getting this information on mold for whatever frickin' reason. And she, <laughs> I guess, read into it that he was interested in her. And then he's, he's just asking a question about the mold or something. And she's like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> it's over. It's over between us. <laughs> I don't know why he wants that information. I legitimately don't know this time. I'm not feigning ignorance or anything. This Baronet's love of Let's Villa. Shouldn't interest you. The Baroness don't mingle with just anyone. Don't worry. I'm here to see your chambermaid, Molly. Out of the way. Baroness is riding out. Be gone.
Geralt of Rivia at my doorstep? Surely this is no chance encounter? Greetings, Baroness. Greetings, General. You're right. I'm here for a reason. There's no mistaking you. But for etiquette's sake, Mary Louisa Lavalette, an Imperial General and a Witcher meet. And know each other. Surprising. Yeah, we had an opportunity to, uh, talk when the Emperor summoned me to Vizima. Had you run afoul of Var Emery's? No. You'd be long dead if that were so. It seems, then, that you share some interests. But I shan't question you out of doors. Will you accept my invitation? Tell me what brings you here. Looking for a girl named Molly. Heard she works here. My maidservant. I'm afraid she's currently at the home of my dear friend Patricia Vagelbud. Perhaps Geralt could accompany us. He could speak with Molly at the races. Is that something you'd consider, Witcher? Care to partake of some sophisticated diversion? Well, if Molly will be there... On our way, then! We've arrived. My father owned a similar estate in Bruges. As a young girl, I'd travel there often to ride. Shall we look at the horses? Do you like horses, Geralt? I guess so. Called every horse I've had Roach. The Grey Mare is Cantarella, sired by Cahir, the champion from Vol. Grey's a nice color. For horses, too. My coin's on the Black Stallion, Nemrot, purest Nilfgaardian stock. Surprised he didn't salute you, General. Know anything about the Chestnut or the Bay? The Chestnut is Thunderbolt, a pure blood Retanian, gallant steed, but too headstrong for my taste, difficult to control. And the Bay hails from Zericania. Lord Zavolta acquired him recently. I know little about him, though Zericanians are reputed to have incredible stamina. Is Molly a horse? Pardon? I did come here to see Molly, after all. Patience, Witcher. She ought to arrive soon. I asked Molly to join us as soon as she was done with her chores. She shouldn't be long now. All depends what you asked her to do, my lady. But I don't really have a choice. I'll wait. Seem to know your horses. No is not the word. Morvran's a true expert. I find them to be far more honest than men. Must say, I'm curious how you manage in the saddle, Witcher. Mostly just try to stay in it. What would you say to a little race? Not what I came here for. Don't make me beg, Witcher. Tell you what. Win, and I shall give you my finest saddle, made in Nilfgaard proper of beautifully tanned leather. Why not? Wouldn't mind seeing if your knowledge of horses translates into riding skills. Well said. So, which steed do you choose, Witcher? Radovid's encamped nearby. Redanian chestnut might want to impress its king. I'll not ride with you, but I shall bet on a steed. Nemrod will win, no matter the rider. Cantarella for me, then. I see no point in delaying this. Let's begin. Going way out of our way to find this information here. Okay, so we gotta get to this one girl. What was her name? Uh... Was it, was this one Molly? Eh, whatever. Anyway, we got another horse race, and all these tend to go the same way. As long as you know how to game the system, you can always win. 
It does seem a little interesting that there is this general from Nilfgaard staying within the city. The people here generally don't have that warm of a feeling for Nilfgaardians, especially ones in the military. So the fact that this guy is able to just sort of waltz into town and take some prominent house there and all that kind of stuff. I guess the city is supposed to be neutral. It's kind of, in a sense, part of uh, Redania, but it is independent. And I guess that's how he managed to survive there without being lynched in the street. Hmm. There we go. What a thrill! A beautiful victory! Thanks. For one for whom every horse is a roach, you carry yourself exquisitely in the saddle. My congratulations. That is yours. Now, could I talk to your chambermaid, milady? Ah, yes, Molly. That is why you came here, after all. The portly young woman. That's her. Speak to her. And you must find us when you're ready to return to Novigrad. We'd be delighted to join you for the journey. Okay. Finally got a chance to go talk to Molly. <laughs> Wish they wouldn't have put us through all of that, but, you know, it is a video game, so... There we go. I'm Molly, my lord. Wish to see me? Call me Geralt. Geralt? That Geralt? The one Dandelions rescued time and time again? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't be here if not for Dandelion. Told me all about your adventures. How he'd ready you for battle with his songs. How he tamed the Cairn by playing his lute. I meant that literally. Dandelion's why I'm here. Came to ask you about him. Know where he might be? No. Sadly, I haven't got a clue. We've not seen each other in ages. The Baroness don't approve of our acquaintance. Says Dandelion's a good-for-nothing layabout. Can you imagine? But... <laughs> or maybe his sister could help you. Such a nice girl. Any chance you remember your last conversation with Dandelion? Course. He came to borrow some coin for a barge. What? Why do you need a barge? To take me on a romantic cruise of the canals by the light of the moon. Said there'd be strawberries and that wine with the bubbles, and he'd sing me arias. But well, I've not seen him since. You do realize Dandelion doesn't have a sister? Sure he does. Saw him myself. Funny, she don't look like him at all. Blonde, for starters. Maybe they've different fathers. Mm-hmm. Different mothers, too. Maybe. But you could see he cares for her. Looks after her. The way he carried her packages and... Know where I can find her, Dandelion's sister? I know. Whenever I ask Dandelion when we visit her, he'd grow all quiet and then change the subject. Thanks, Molly. Wait. Before you go, I've got a request. Dandelion told me once he'd show me his etchings, but he never did. And I'd so like to see him. Won't be too hard to convince him. He loves showing off those etchings to anyone he can. That's wonderful! Thanks! And good luck to you on your search. Amazingly naive there. <laughs> I, I mean, it should be pretty clear to everybody that, that Dandelion is just sort of sleeping around here. But she's unable to come to that realization. But, you know, teach their own. Ah, Geralt, there you are. Shall we return together? Gladly. It's a long way to Novigrad. Road ought to seem shorter with some company. I'd say the same. Well then, let's go. Edna sent Dandelion some love letters. She signed my name. Conceited as he is, naturally he fell for it. I was left to repel the aging bard's advances. 
Rosa, I had the best of intentions, you know that. I felt you needed help taking the first step. You blushed every time he sang a ballad. He'll next sing at your funeral if you don't stop it right now.